Where where you go the cheap route, you end up paying the price. Welcome back to my channel where we're all about leveling up, elevating, living our best lives. Part of that is investing in ourselves, our businesses most importantly. And finally, I found a farm to film for you guys. I'm so excited because it is a value farm. They have an amazing, informative channel here on YouTube and they literally give you all the ins and outs of everything that they do on their mixed farm. A mixed farm essentially has different types of animals as well as agriculture to be able to support the animals, to support themselves, to support the workers. It's an ecosystem here and I'm just so happy that this is the type of farm that I've been able to bring for you guys. I love their channel because they are very transparent. They give you so much information. So I hope this video is super informative for you. No, 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 no. I know this video is super informative for you. And then you can go and check out their content as well. And I definitely want to come back and explore some more too. So enough rambling, let's get into it. Let's go see some goats, some pigs, and how we're going to make some money in 2023. <laughs> All right, so we are here with Tina. I'm so yeah. excited. Thank you for You're agreeing to show welcome. us your farm. You guys know how long I've been waiting to do a farm tour. Yeah. So we can start off, you can tell us about where we are now. So right now we are starting with the goat house. Okay. This is our raised structure. I know most farms there have the the normal one and okay. the raised structure, but we chose this because we want our animals to be off ground. Okay. For some reasons, of course. Okay. So if you could tell us a little bit more about what happens here at the goat house. Well, in the goat house, we have different breeds. Okay. We have the Movendes, we have the Boas, we have the Savannas, we have the Kalahari Red, we also have the Alpines. Oh, wow. Yes, okay. but basically we do meat yes. production. That is our main motive at Valley Farm. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, so we have different, and of course we want to do breeding, yeah. most especially. It's breeding for us and also other farmers, okay. then also some selling for meat. Okay, nice, yes. nice, perfect. Okay, yeah. so I guess we can come in a little bit closer. Yeah, let's go in so that I can show you the different sections. Okay. Because we currently also imported goats from South Africa oh, that nice. we want to enhance on the breed that we have here. Oh, nice. Yes. Okay, let's go check let's it out. Go. <laughs> Alright, so as you can see, I have to put my hair up because these little goaties want to eat, my, <laughs> eat me alive, actually. But anyway, you guys can talk a little bit about what's going on in here because it's a lot and it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, actually, Rachel, you shouldn't get scared about these goats. Most of them are very friendly, If you, especially for the boas. Those exotic goats are really too friendly. They can come towards you. Yeah. They always want to hop on you. But we have a variety, like yes. I told you. We have the boas, we have the savannas, we have the Kalahari red, then also a few alpines here. Yeah, nice. it is really amazing. Hi everybody, my name is Grafton, co-director of Value Farm. Um, I wanted to welcome you to Value Farm, Rachel. Thank you. It's really nice to have somebody else on the ground. So the reason we're here, this is about the goats. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're in the goat pen here. As far as why we're here in the elevated house is because we wanted to help um, el eliminate a lot of the diseases that come with the goats being on the ground okay. because as they urinate, that's ammonia. Yeah. Uh, and especially for both the young ones and the adult ones, when that get into their lungs, you know, it can cause all types of issues. And that's why we opt to elevate instead of keeping them on the ground. Not to mention, this is much easier to clean yes. because the floors itself, they actually spaced out in a certain way yes. so that when they both urinate and of course when, they, when they're dropping, it actually can easily fall through the ground uh, so it doesn't stay here for much longer, right? And then sense. later on, the staff can come and just sweep up whatever remains. Right. But there's a reason the house is faced to this direction because how, where the sun rise, uh, the rays actually disinfect the floors naturally. Really? So and yes. yes, of course. So this is yeah, I just think of feng shui for my own <laughs> home decor. I didn't even think about it as farming, but look at me learning. <laughs> yeah, and so that's why we built it this way. But the reason these other ghosts are behind us here, mm. there's a variety of ghosts. We actually started out with the Movendes and one really good ram, which okay. was one of us, the king, okay. a value farm, right? <laughs> and the reason we actually started out with the Movendes, those are indigenous ghosts from Uganda. So they're far more disease resistant. They're also used to the environment. So we didn't want to just come with automatic pure goats right, because those right. are more susceptible to a lot of the disease okay. in the region. So we wanted to boost the immunity 
level okay. with the local goats, enhance the overall genetic makeup of those goats, and now we have the pures to actually take it to the next level. Okay, Because gotcha. the idea is to breed them at least four times into the cycle right. to get them up to that 100% level. Okay. But right now, we're already at turn three. Okay. And we're just gonna keep going. Gotcha, okay, I love that. No, you guys have a phenomenal structure going on here. So I did wanna ask for those who are interested, and a lot of people are, because everybody wanted me to do a farming video, but now a structure to the size and caliber that you guys have, was it expensive to come around to be able to create? Was it more like, um, easy for an entry-level farmer, but what would you say in your expertise? That's a phenomenal question. I would say it's easy and it's also durable. Okay. Now, the reason we opt to do this size is because the goal for us was, we, we went with the dual pur purpose approach. Okay. Both for meat production as well as for breeding purposes. Okay. So most of you out there, when you first start and you need to decide what you wanna what do you first. Mean? So if you're gonna go for meat, you might not need to start out with a structure of this size, okay. right? Or if you wanna do breeding, in fact, you're not gonna need a big structure at all because it's gonna take you time to get the proper genetics. Okay. Those goats do not come cheap. Yes. <laughs> and so you literally can, one of these goats can get you a Louis Vuitton back in the States okay. with the pures, right? Okay. <laughs> so, so you may not necessarily need a ginormous house like this, but even okay. if you were to ask for a house of this size, it's manageable. It all depends on the type of materials you decide to use the builder you decide to go with, okay. and all our factors into it. I would say a house like this could easily cost between about 2,500 to 3,500 maximum. Okay. That's if you decide to go with all the high-end you know, materials. Oh, okay. However, even a house of this size can cost you about less than 2,000 if you go with the local materials. Okay. You can use the local rough cuts. You don't have to necessarily use like standard timber. Okay. You know, the most expensive part is gonna just be the iron sheets. Oh, okay. That's it, okay. yeah. That's really good to know. I think that's super helpful. That is amazing. Yeah. All right, so I think we're gonna go and head out to the next section. There's yeah. so many sections, so I'm really excited. Let's go check them out. All right. <laughs> By the way, Rachel, before we move out of the house, I wanted to let you know about the different sections that we have in this yes, house, okay. because that is also very necessary for any farmer out there, especially the beginners to know. Yes. We have different sections for different goats as well. Okay. For the males, for the females, mm -hmm. the growers, uh, then of, of course the kids as okay, well. Okay, yes, so, the cute little kids. <laughs> <laughs> the kids especially make them really warm. That's mm. why you see on their section, there's some grass on it. Uh, Okay. to keep them warm. Then of course, when the, it's time for them to feed, we bring the mothers in there okay. to feed before we get them out. Oh, so well yes. organized. It makes yeah. sense. They, yeah, I did notice that walking in, there are many different sections. Different so sections. It makes a lot more sense now. Exactly. Then of okay. course, we separated also the exotic goods okay. because they're adapting, they, are, they need their own space uh, for now. Yeah, they can't yeah. just be in the herd with these guys. <laughs> exactly. Okay, makes sense. Exactly. Nice. Yeah, okay. that's how it is. All right, and so where are we headed next? Which section? So we can and get out and we see maybe the pig section okay because this is the whole farm tour for Russia. yes let's go <laughs> okay so we are here at the pig house which i find so interesting because the first thing you guys told me was the first thing you'll notice when you get to this place guys if you've ever been to any other type any other pig farms that does not practice this method you'll be greeted with a very familiar smell that you don't want to experience ever in your life but the fact that we're right outside of the pen we're standing here, you cannot smell anything. At all, yeah. At so all. that's because we practice IMO, indigenous microorganism, right? And that's the actual solution that we use. You could use different types of materials, but we decided to use wood chips, wood okay. shavings. But some people can use um, rice husks, coffee husks, whatever, they, whatever they're comfortable using. But we went with the wood chips because that's what's easily and readily available for us here at the farm. And yeah, we wanted to just welcome you guys here and educate your viewers yes, about what please. it's like to actually have a pig farm. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about be, con being considered a dirty person because you're raising pigs. Right. Because it's all based <laughs> on how you maintain the pigs, right. how you care for your animals. And as you guys will see, all the pigs are clean. They're not smelly. There's nothing weird. And you can do commercial farming in this manner. So the number one misinformation I want to make sure I help your viewers understand 
most people understand how to do this the local way. Yeah. And they will try to advise new upcoming pig farmers to do it where you just put the cement slab okay. or you put the slates on the ground. Let me tell you guys, that's so much more expensive yeah. uh, because in order to maintain that place at some level of, of, of cleanliness, cleanliness yeah. you're going to need at least triple the staff. So when you go with IMO with the wood shavings, once you stack the floor itself with enough wood shavings, that gets to stay there for at least six to seven months. Oh, okay. And the beauty of okay. that, right, it then becomes perfect organic fertilizer. Oh, so. I love anything that you can use later and repurpose for something else. It just makes more economic sense. Like, why not? Yeah, it makes economic sense from the fact that you don't always have to keep changing it, not to mention the amount of staff you're going to need actively. Right. When you have the slave floors or the concrete floor, in order to main, make sure that you keep the swine flu away, you're going to have to clean that place at least four or five times a day. Every time the pigs do anything on that floor, you have to immediately spray it. So the water right. usage, um, the manpower that you're going to need on the ground. But using this, we find out it worked for us. You know, it went against conventional wisdom here locally. Okay, but yeah. a lot of people are not starting to convert <laughs> because they know this uh, way works. Okay, I love that. <laughs> and also changing the, the narrative and what, we're, what people yeah. assume and stubbornly go along with. But you don't even realize there's better ways to do things. Okay, That's true. let's go see these little piglets. Let's go. <laughs> First reaction was literally you can't smell anything. It's yeah. quite... Very odd, but very nice. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I even have to get used to this. <laughs> the cool thing is some people actually have land in a more urban setting. Yeah. So you can't even practice this when you are a little closer to civilization, obviously. Yeah. And the reason we decided to go this route is because we have neighbors. Even though we're in the village, we have neighbors that yes. are close enough to us that the smell would actually impact them as well. Right. We wanted to remain in business and stay open for the long haul. <laughs> we decided from the very us. beginning not to be chased, so we went with this method, and it definitely works. And of course, it's far more comfortable for the pigs. Uh -huh. And another thing that I hope you guys take away from this, when you use this method, when it's time for your females to get crossed with the males, right? Mm -hmm. Typically, if you have slate floors, right, you have to actually move the pigs outside. Oh, because okay. if they were to mate on this surface here, the male could slip, the female could slip, they can oh, break yes. legs, okay. they can really get injured. But in this this particular flooring, yeah. you don't have to worry about that. that and it's so and cool. it's easier for them to gain weight. They can definitely relax more. It's far more comfortable. More luxurious. It is it luxurious. Is. Imagine you sleeping on the concrete floor versus having um, a mattress to sleep on. Right. So yeah. that's the that's why we okay. try to recreate. Yeah. Got it. Say it last. I already get. That's why I don't go camping. <laughs> Mattresses <laughs> only, honey. Okay. Okay. So how many pigs do you have in uh, this setting? This house here. Large. This house here can hold anywhere between like 650 up to 700 pigs. Okay. Because this section here, as we see in front of us, this is the grower the, the grower section here. Okay. We also have the wiener sections. We, we use it for both. Okay. In the beginning, when they're very small, we can keep anywhere between like 50 to 60 piglets that we recently weaned. Okay. Those are the ones that we took away from the moms that right. stopped breastfeeding. So to the point where they can now start eating independent of the mom, right? Okay. So we can easily keep between like six to 700 pigs here. Okay. Right now at this moment, because we've been selling a lot, okay. we have, a, we have rough a little over 200. Okay. But then we also have a partner from that we work with, which okay. is uh, about 30 minutes away from here. Okay. They have an additional 250 pigs. So overall, as a company, we have the ability to scale up to about 700 at this location. Okay. But as you'll see outside, we already have another site right. that we intend to keep adding because the demand is so, so great. So great. That is amazing. <laughs> I love I love this setup. Yeah, I just like that I can be amongst animals <laughs> and breathe yeah. and not be scared. Wow. A farmer, me, farmer coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Landris. How you can tell it's a Landris, it's very long, and obviously it has very, very good weight on it. And the reason we actually use this pick to give us the cameras is because alone, mm -hmm. they're not the greatest. But when you cross them, okay, right? Because this one has great maternal instincts. They take good care of their piglets. And of course you have the large white, mm -hmm. which is great for the growth rate, okay. for the food conversion. So large white, literally, if you have a real large white, They'll be ready to go for processing anywhere between five and a half months 
between, oh, okay. I would say between, between five months to five and a half months, they should be ready to go for processing. Okay, okay. In this business, anytime you keep your pigs beyond that six month time window, every single day you keep them beyond six months, you're already in the red and you never make up that margin. Oh, okay. So, so best, you have to get that sweet spot. That window is paramount. Okay, so okay. best that you get the right breed, the proper genetics. Yes, they may cost a little bit more money, but it's like investing in a great pair of shoes, right? Yeah. I love <laughs> these and that, like, I no. love it. <laughs> you buy it once, you tighten your belt, you make that investment one time, and, and it's gonna... That shoe forever, I know. Exactly. So how, um, how much does this weigh? Like this, 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 this particular weight. female here, she's around 125 to 130 kgs. Okay, wow, And another thing, too, when you take them for processing, just expect to lose about 30% because the butcher usually keep the the head oh, and the offals itself. So okay. expect to lose about 30% of the body weight, but still, yeah, you start at 130 yeah. to end up about 100. And then you think about the mathematics involved, this pig would definitely bring home the bacon, uh, literally. Okay, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Okay, let's explore some more. Okay. Yeah, these are the other growers that we have. Reese, wieners, right? These, okay. are, these are all, you see, we can keep more here because they're very young. Yeah, yeah. And then as they get older and bigger, then we reduce the numbers, yeah. Them. So I'm sure a lot of you are definitely thinking of the, all the costs of everything that's going on. If you could just break down to us how feeding works. Okay. So I think that's usually a big expense for like, a lot of people, or what they, <laughs> what they assume is a big expense. Of course, feeding is costly if you've not planned. Yes. So what we ask most people who are getting into pig farming is to plant your own feeds. Okay. Plant your own maize, because this just feed on maize bran, right. and of course the concentrates, if you have the soya, then those other supplements that you can add into the feeds. But as long as you grow your own feeds, you grow on your, your own maize, yes. you're good to go. Okay. So we feed these pigs twice a day. People think because they're big, they're they big, eat they a eat. Lot. No, okay. they actually we measure their food okay. every day, and they feed only twice a day. Twice a day. In the morning at seven thirty, then okay. at around three. Okay. That's it. So they depend on the water. Uh, so you okay. may be asking, maybe how do we measure the feeds for these pigs? So mm. we have different ratios for different growers okay. for the finishers and also the expecting mothers as oh, well okay okay exactly okay, cool. for the growers we give them one kilogram in the okay. morning then one kilogram in the afternoon, afternoon. Okay. yes then for the mothers we give them two kilograms in the morning then two kilograms oh, okay. in the afternoon that's not bad no that's not so bad oh, exactly okay. yes so it is really manageable as long as you have the feeds the concentrates right. in there and of course different ratios for different categories as right, well right. Okay. because it may give the the little ones yeah, the little piglet. <laughs> different pressures and it will affect them in the long run okay. and also it will cause you to really waste so much feed in your right, farm right. so you need to really have the calculation you have to do your research first before you get into this yes as well i always say that do your due diligence the channels and everything you see on um, youtube is great entry level get some information but you yourself needs to go and like Crunch the numbers and make it make sense. That is so true. Yeah. What I always advise farmers who are really starting this, have a plan, Yes. do your research, yes. visit other farms. Yes. Because this really helped us a lot, especially in the beginning when we visited other farms, we saw what they were doing, how they're doing it different, right. so that we can get something that really works for you. Right. So if you're a farmer out there, go and visit different farms as possible as you can. I love that. Yes. When I'm ready, you know where I'm going to be, <laughs> value farm. <laughs> Most people on my channel are like me and they're like, where the money at? Like, how does that work? If you could give us a little breakdown on how people can profit from things like pigs. Well, uh, that's a very good question. And for those of you out there that are interested, I'm gonna keep it very, very simple for you, right? You literally can spend about a hundred and, I would say quality genetics between three, 250 to 300 on a very good piglet, right? Okay. That piglet is gonna be around two months old. Now your job when you get it onto your farm, you're only supposed to keep that pig for an additional four months. Four months. Four months. If you have a superb breed like we have here and some of the other fellow farmers like at Napas and a few other places here, that pig is only supposed to be at your farm in an ideal world for just 
three and a half months. Okay, that's actually really good. I was thinking it was going to be like years or something. No, actually some people do that when they buy the local breeds. <laughs> when they go local, they go cheap. They, okay. When they go the pay less route, yeah. right, they end up keeping those pigs for like a year. Yeah. These fashion references <laughs> I'm are sorry. killing me. I, I know because this is <laughs> your audience, right? When you go the cheap route, you end up paying the price. We always yeah. tell people cheap is very expensive. Yeah. So if you get the right genetics, you get them at the right age, you only keep them for three and a half months, so a maximum of four months. Now think about it, during the time that you have the pig, when they're no longer feeding from the mom, right? You're gonna spend anywhere between, I'm gonna say between 280 to 270,000 shillings. Okay. So if you bought the pig for a total of 300 and you spend another like 280, you know, it takes you over 500, obviously 580, right? Okay. But as if you did your job properly with proper nutrition and you Which looked after the pigs, right? Mm -hmm. You got the right genetics. You know what happened when you take it for processing? Mm -hmm. You can easily sell that pig for around 1.5 to 1.6 million Ugandan okay. shillings. So now, if you do that consistently, you can definitely earn a great living it's without really having to be in your living. office in Kampala <laughs> all great the time. Living, actually. You understand? Yeah. Because you know this, and I know this. How many people in Kampala you know, while they're sleeping, they can have just three to four pigs in production. Yeah. And each time those pigs produce, they give you an average of 10 to 12 piglets right. that you can eventually sell for. 1.5 to 1.6. Now, if you actually sell the meat direct to consumer, mm -hmm. you can actually take that number up to 3 million oh, shillings wow, okay. per animal that okay, you process. Right. But most people just take it to the butcher and, and then <laughs> they yeah, keep it moving. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. So, but think about it. You spend 600K, you can make a profit of a million. Yeah. That's a simplified way so of looking at it. I like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go see how much more money we can make in the rest of this farm. Okay. <laughs> Tiva, we're in another breed of animals. Uh, if you can yeah. talk to us a little bit about the cows, because I see the traditional cows, I see Angola <laughs> cows. And the Frisian. Yes, I see a, a bunch of, and oh, little babies. I see a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a mixed farm, we really mm. had to also bring in some, some cows yes, here. And yeah. these cows really help us a lot, not okay. only for the milk production for us to take, yes. but also we give the milk to the piglets, okay. by the way, as well. <laughs> Gotta so the major thing about these cows, of course, we have the Ancole traditional cow that yeah. we have here. It gets us a lot of milk. Then we also introduce the Frisians yeah. that we have here, of course, still for the milk purpose, right. but especially for the piglets. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we are not too much into the cow, you know, yes, production. As, it, yes, I can see you guys are growing the. the yeah, growing, section. and mm -hmm. that is what happens with everything that we have at the farm. Mm -hmm. We started small, right. but we kept on growing the numbers. Yes. So this is just the beginning. Right. And we hope to really have so many cows I in the hope future. you guys will. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you said you started with 18 piglets and yes. you guys are now at 200 pigs. Exactly. No, we started no with one goat. Yeah, with <laughs> one goat. And now where you are and in 18 months. Yes. Wild. I love it. Exactly. I love so to see it. The advice here is start small, but think big. Think big. Can you talk to us a little bit about the water source? The water source here yeah. we have a dam that okay. we dug that is one of the investments that we did at value farm okay. in the beginning when we started the farm we wanted water right. supply okay. and of course we are very far from our neighbors and the water source from this village is not really very oh, good okay. to, it's not accessible right so we had to dig our own okay. hole, yeah. then also the dam so the dam really supplies everywhere okay. around the farm i see yeah. this as a common thing for most farmers of always trying to create their own water source to be able yeah. to support so yeah. it makes a lot of sense makes okay. a lot of sense I I start with the dam. Start yes. even if it's small. Ours is quite big because we had so many animals here. Right. But you can start with a small one, then okay. you can increase. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. All right, let's go check out some other things. <laughs> Yeah, this is another section, of course. This is our new structure, our new goat structure we have here. Okay. For the exotic goats, because we started importing and we are on a mission of enhancing our goat, goat project okay. at the farm. So we really want them to be here. Of course, these are exotic goats. They yeah. are not yet familiar with the environment. So we don't get them to go out to graze right. on free range. Okay. So this is like going to be like zero grazing. We keep them okay. here as well. So it is also a raised goat house, as you can see. It's off the ground. Yes. 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 Which is really very beneficial for your animals, not to get diseases, not yes. to really 
have so many defects. Okay, yes. I literally, as a non-farmer, interested yeah. in being a farmer, I had no idea. So that's <laughs> exactly. That's a very important green grain now in yes. my mind. Okay. That is very important. Okay. Yeah, it's still under construction. Okay. They're finishing up the inside, of course. Yeah. But our goats come here, as you can see, the place is fenced off. Yes. Yes, yes, so we let the goats to be outside. This is the exercising yard, okay, as nice. you can see. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so we bring the grasses. We also planted our grasses, by the way, for the for these goats. Okay. As a farmer out there, you need to plant your grass. Yes. You have to plant the brocaria, alfalfa, uh, okay. sugar grays, sun hem. Of grass. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's a lot. That's why we like tell you you need to do your research. research. Yeah. Yes. Evidently. You can't just jump into the jump thing. into it or just go based off what other people tell you. you exactly. Really you need to go and do your own research so yeah that is so true that's what i'm going to be spending my 2023 <laughs> doing this is wonderful yeah exactly <laughs> so for farmers out there who really want to venture into goat farming mind more about the breed that you get yes. as well yeah because if you get really the local goats you're going to take years before getting mm, numbers okay. mind more about the the quality than the quantity that right you have the yeah the 100 percent. exactly 100%. okay yeah so quantity is not good for you because you're going to really get frustrated the animals are not growing yes. but at least invest yes. in a back and the major thing about goat farming is having the back in your flock okay because that is going to really improve on the genetics as oh, well okay okay yes. oh nice to know yeah i'm gonna write my notes on the way home <laughs> i swear to you <laughs> exactly. all right where are we gonna check out next oh we can be able to check out maybe the water pond oh. or we can check out the um, the sheep. The sheep. Yeah. Let's go check out the sheep. All right. Because you have told me about a new situation you had going on that you guys exactly. brought in. So let's go, so yes. let's go talk about sheep. All right. <laughs> So you've shown us so much of your farm, which has been amazing and super informative. I know that there's sheep left and a few other things you guys wanted to mention. So we'll go ahead and talk about that before we get into the interview. Yeah, so guys, at this farm, this is a true mixed farm, not just a standard mixed one, but this is the idea for this place is to have it be set as a demonstration farm. Uh, okay. So that way, when we actually finish building the housing structures for human, We've been building a lot for the animals, right? Yes. We, we, the goal is to get attachments from Macare University, even students from Chambogo University, okay. all over Eastern Africa that actually want to get hands-on application. You know, back yes. in the States and Canada, when you want to become a vet or a doctor, you have to do your rotationals, have right? Have so, <laughs> so that's the reason why we have a, a little bit of everything that we feel that's pertinent okay. to getting a well-rounded education when it comes to agriculture, particularly the hands-on training aspect of it. Okay. Yeah. That. And I know when we were driving in, they were just bringing out the sheep. So if you talk to us yeah. a little bit about that, because I thought it was So we <laughs> actually, uh, for those of you that has been following us uh, on our end, on our, with our content, we actually went to Kenya. To, we imported a bunch of um, dopper sheep. A lot yeah. of them are from South Africa. Pure doppers here in Uganda. It's such a privilege to have that. But we also started out with the indigenous ones. Just yes. like, there's like a common theme, right? Yes. We start out with the locals, then we enhance the locals, and then we test the waters, <laughs> yes. and then we go all out. So then we went to Kenya. We spent about a month in Kenya. Oh, wow. But even before that, yeah, we basically went all over the, all I feel like a Kenyan right now. Wow, I didn't and, know that. I think I went for like a week, and I was like, what are you no. doing? That was a lot of we, went, we, we made three trips to Kenya. Okay. We were there for about a month. Okay. And we brought back the uh, the dopper sheep. Now, what you have to know, I don't want to bore your audience, the dopper sheep are at the same caliber as the boa goats. As a matter of fact, some of the male doppers can cost more than a boa goat. Okay. A boa goat can easily be sold for five million Ugandan shillings. Okay. A pure dopper could easily be sold for, especially the males, the rams could the go rams. for anywhere between 10 to 15 million Ugandan shillings. Okay. If you get a pure oh. one pedigree pure right, okay. so no so we have them here okay makes yeah. sense all right and then you mentioned also what well, because obviously <laughs> being canadian they're like look our canadian geese. yeah i'm like why do you have those literal savage animals <laughs> in your farm yeah but you mentioned yeah no we have the geese here on the ground because you know we have ducks we have chickens and we even have turkeys here at the farm as well yeah. the reason we have them because they're the best natural protection you can have because we're out here in the village, we have eagles, we have foxes, we have other predators on the on the prowl. You know, for those of you that are that want to fact check this, go on YouTube. You'll literally see a pair of geese can put themselves oh, in between your animals, fine. even against a fox. Yeah. Animals. I was here telling them there's viral videos of little children, three yeah. girls being attacked yeah. across the street by geese, and I'm like, people will be attacked by them. If you're not part of the flock, if they don't know who you are, you're not welcome. Clearly. 
you know so we have them we love them and they're delicious and at some point we hope to actually get to grow that flock because guess what we all love luxury pillows you love yeah. those when you go to your favorite the hotel the down the pillows down the comforters down the duvets yeah, the why do you think they put in them they, those feathers come from goose right yeah. the geese so at some point when we get everything situated, properly calibrated, we hope to have about a thousand to two thousand of them in the future. It's actually really smart. That's Thank you. Smart. Really smart. <laughs> All right, so let's get into some of the questions that brought me here. Really thinking about what you guys have been asking over the years and also my own self because I'm gonna be a glam farmer. <laughs> Anyways, um, how did you guys get into the agricultural industry? Is that where you started? Why? Because I remember you said you were baking. You were doing YouTube with other kind of like a mic with our similar mm -hmm. content in our yeah. niche. For myself, guys, I was in the banking industry for about 14, almost 15 years. Uh, worked with JP Morgan, you know, Wachovia Securities, like took me all over the globe. The reason I wanted to do farming, ironically enough, my dream was to actually do farming in the U.S. Uh, okay. I actually have 100 acres of land in the U.S. in Arizona, which oh, is my nice. favorite state in America. Okay, okay. But there was so many red tape yeah. to be able to get to this level here. The level of funding I would have needed would have been maybe like five million to right. actually do what I'm doing here. But I've always had a passion for farming. But you know, there's always a saying in life, right? Every successful man, there's always a successful woman that's right there. Right. So that what I needed was a reliable business partner. I was able to find one here in Uganda. Although initially I was supposed to go to Ghana. Ah, okay. But then things didn't quite work out with that partner on the ground there. Okay. And then Tina has been a godsend. She made all of this possible, guys. While I was still in the US, the realtor and the, the grunt, the partner, the hard worker yes. doing all the dirty work that nobody got to see was Let's this lady see. here. So that's love the it. reason it was, it was, I became more comfortable coming here. The level of commitment became more, you know, something I could see working because I actually had that one reliable partner on the ground. And then that turned into the gentleman, the doctor behind the camera. This guy's not a driver, he's a doctor. But this, this was the original network that I was tapped into because of Tina and it has grown. So then the enterprise has grown. So I love that. that's how it started. Okay. But then even before that, the research, the economics, the price of food, addressing food insecurity, that was also a mutual goal that we had right. as a unit. Okay. And so it was a no brainer to go in this direction. Love that. And Tina, how did you get into farming? Mine is a different story, of course, yeah. but I had been working for a telecom company for over okay. 10 years oh. and it was wow. really exhausting. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was really so exhausting. And of course, for financial freedom, I really yes. wanted to do something of my own. Right. And of course, when my partner reached out, mm -hmm. it was a great idea to, to try something else. Right. That's why I got into farming and of course I went in all for everything. So just a quick question because I, we did mention that earlier about like um, the regular kind of jobs that people may have not realizing like you can tap into our country. Exactly. Was it a big difference from being in a telecom industry now being in farming for yourself personally? Of course it's quite different. It's Love very it. enjoyable. <laughs> very, very Love enjoyable. It. Most Love people it. think maybe sitting in an office is quite enjoyable. You get your money, yeah. you get your salary at the end of the people. month. Yeah. It, works it works for some people, people but yeah. when you try something else, something else that you would really adventure, yeah. you really explore your potential. Right. I didn't know that I would be this. Yeah. <laughs> at this time. I yes, love that. I'm enjoying it. I love that. At the beginning, where did you guys start? Because you mentioned 18 pigs, one goat. Wow. Yeah. Where, where were you? Yeah. Um, I think even the acreage was less. How did you guys initially start for those people who might feel like mm, it's a bit intimidating? It seems a bit like a reach. I'm going to get there one day. <laughs> so initially, the experience I had transitioning from the U.S. here was kind of tricky okay. because, you know, the group that the expat assist group that we were working with were not honest with what it would be like to transition to yeah, Uganda. Like you know, what they told me was like, oh, as a foreigner, you can buy land here. You could do ABC. So when I got to Uganda, I found the story was very different. Yes. But luckily because of Tina, again, because she's 100% Ugandan, I was able, we were able to purchase the land together because the company is jointly owned, obviously. Right, and then we, were, we started out with about a little over 40 acres, okay. but we've grown since, you yeah, know? I've grown, <laughs> yeah, I've grown, yeah. And yeah. then, so we started with that, but then no, we started literally, initially we bought one pig that we rescued. It was a oh, rescue mission. Rescued. 
yeah. You know, <laughs> and then after that, we actually went to a reputable breeder, Richard Ovad and Guru Farm okay. in Wakiso District. We purchased 18, thir was it 18? 19? It was 13 piglets initially. Okay. Plus we had Lance, the first male pig here. He made 14. Mm -hmm. And at first we didn't even have housing for them. Oh, wow. They literally were living just under a tent. a tent. They were just out here, <laughs> free willing. Wow, you know, free, wow. free based all over the place. But then gradually as this continued to grow, we actually built the temporary structure for them to okay. keep them safe from the element to what we have here now, what, 16 months later. Right. That's Which the outcome. Honestly, it's phenomenal. It's inspiring, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. What made you get into animals versus crops? That's a very good question. The reason that we, when we did the research, we felt it was definitely more predictable okay. to go into livestock management right. because you control the elements there. That's true. That's true. That was the no-brainer <laughs> aspect That's of it. Really true. Versus, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, we're, yeah, Mother Nature will give you whatever blows yeah. within her arsenal. But yeah. then, if you can actually have your own structure, you can bring in water. You know, you can have your goats. You can have whatever animal you want to raise. But right. you can literally plant a hundred acres of maize if the rains don't come when they're supposed to. Yeah, that could be curtains <laughs> before you like even get started. Acres and acres and acres yeah. Of, yeah, yeah. That's very, very true. If you don't mind me asking, what was your initial investment in the farm? Initial investment for the land, because it was quite vast initially. Yeah. Uh, when we first started, the land here was still relatively cheap. So we got yeah. almost over 40 acres of land for roughly a, li a little over 20K. Wow. At the time. At the time. Yeah, at the, the time. time. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasize at, at, at the, the time. time. Yeah. At the time. I'm guessing, okay, was... It could have been a lot cheaper. Like 2020? Yeah, 2020. The company was started officially in 2020. Okay. But the key there, guys, don't fret, don't panic. We wanted to purchase because that's why we felt more comfortable oh, yeah. doing. If we wanted to lease, that number could have easily been like 5,000 or less. You understand? Yeah. So for us, because we wanted to have permanent structure, right. we wanted to own. This was not something we wanted to just try for a few months. Right. This is a lifestyle change. This is yeah. something that we really wanted to be here for the long haul. We figured if we're going to build buildings here, we want to have control of the land in perpetuity. That That's sense. why we went that route. A lot of sense. Okay. For the pigs, um, the initial stock of piglets that we purchased was, what, 2.5 million? Oh, okay. So it literally a little over, like, less than $1,700. You know, but I will tell you this, though. Every single one of those pigs that we purchased have repaid us back tenfold. Oh, I love that. So I love you ask that. yourself, if you want to start a, 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 a software company, you might need a couple hundred thousand or a few million. Yeah. If you want to go ahead and go into the, the entrepreneurial space itself, and you wanted to start a, open a garage or auto dealership, you're going to need millions. Yeah. What other industry can you come in with a modest investment and also just have biology be on your side, right? You understand? Yeah, like once, once you get that initial investment and you get your livestock, at that point it just becomes a waiting game. And I love it because you're not reinventing the wheel. Like, no, you're not. You're a farmer amongst other farmers, <laughs> but yeah. you just, I love it. I love it. It's not as complex as the other industries. Very, very. Very true. What has been your most profitable part of farming? Like maybe the pigs, the goats, the sheep? I would feel say like you do the biggest margin. The best margins to me is definitely with, with the, but it depends though. Okay. They all have their own advantages and okay. for some folks, they also have their, what you can consider like a con as well, right? Oh, so yeah, they are pros and cons to everything. Okay. You know, the goats venture itself, when you first start out, it could definitely be challenging because of lack of knowledge. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that is true. Because if you don't know how to manage your goats, yeah. you're going to find your mortality rate is going to be in the 40 to 50 percentile. Oh, wow. And wow. so okay. until you learn how to manage those goats and how to minimize your mortality rate, right. that's a huge flaw in okay. goat farming. However, once you get that system now, you understand what you're doing, you have a clue, then it becomes fun to be a goat farmer, right? Okay. <laughs> and the same thing goes for pigs, right? If you enter pig farming yeah, the wrong right. way, you're gonna feel the pain. Right. But if you find this channel, even our channel and other YouTubers, and you've done your research, and you know before you start, the number one thing you do before you buy your pigs, you have to plant your food first. 
for your pigs to minimize their cost, then pig farming will be an enjoyable venture. Okay. It'll be like going to Coney Island or Disneyland. <laughs> but if you decide to come into it by you just go, you become impatient, you just buy the pigs, right. you bring them to the farm. They're cute when they're young. Yes. But then as they get older, feeding even 10 pigs a day, yeah, it's going to be, be quite costly. Okay. Yeah. So what do you feel like are some of the challenges faced by farmers in Uganda in general? Maybe not necessarily some that you might have noticed or some from your industry from talking to other people. The I first one should be management. Management, okay. Yes, it's really so hard to get trusted workers. And a farm manager. And a farm manager okay. that is going to really be there on ground. Okay. To really oversee things when you're not available, when right. you're not around. Yeah. So it's really very difficult. Even the laborers, even people who just come and do other casual work, mm -hmm. it's really so hard. People come for a short time and disappear. Uh, Some of them maybe steal the animals. Oh, so it is wow. a challenge okay. as well. <laughs> okay. So of course you need to be very vigilant as well. You right. need to be on ground monitor everything closely but right. that is one of the challenges because okay. it's no different whether you're in the u.s or in canada finding quality help is always difficult yeah, it's, difficult. it's it's more pronounced here because of how people tend to leave the work yeah you see back home the <laughs> folks will notice. give you a two weeks notice <laughs> yes. over here somebody gets paid and then yeah. you they just decide they're gonna take whatever belongings they brought and then c'est la vie so <laughs> that's the tricky part but i would have to say the biggest challenge that we're faced here on especially here in uganda there are a tremendous amount of unqualified vets on the ground oh. yeah. there's a lot of fake vets and a lot of fake medication oh. on the ground okay. so in that those mistakes can cost you so dearly much. Because you think everybody here, if they went to school for artificial insemination, yeah. they start calling themselves vets, okay. and they come to your farm, and then they start injecting your animals with the wrong dosage, okay. and okay. sometimes they'll bring fake medication. They're using the same syringes that are supposed to be one-time usage at multiple places. So those are the things, unless you are aware and on top of your game, as a beginner, you will definitely lose out gotcha. in a major way. That's so, wild. yeah. Big bad. Wow. Okay. <laughs> what are some factors you didn't really anticipate when you started, or did you really do enough research where you maybe you knew, but like you just kind of like? I think I think the 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 number one thing for me, my partner can interject here. You know, I think the biggest problem I can say she's had is the fact that because we do livestock. She grows very attached oh. <laughs> to, to the animals, right? I so, was not expecting that answer at all. Okay. It's one that you don't yes. anticipate, yeah. right? Like, that like, is, like. That is a good answer. No, good answer. Because, like she grew very attached yeah. to Lance, the first male pig we had here. Yeah. Even the king that we sold off to another farmer. Yeah. It was a battle to actually convince <laughs> her to let him go, <laughs> right? Because we love, we I love the animals too. Yeah. That you grow attached to them. And so, I don't know if you want to add anything else. The truth is, like, you interact with these animals mm -hmm. all the time. You see what they've given you. It is really so hard to let them go. That is the thing. <laughs> In the beginning, so I thought, I used to see before, when yeah, I used to sell like animals. animals, I was like, animals, come on. Yeah. But when we started having the animals in the farm, it became, it became different. Thing. So most, okay. most times when he tells me, like, ah, we, we need to get rid of this, I was like, mm -hmm. Most times I really I was the villain. Yeah. <laughs> I really that was gay. So cute. I yeah. was not expecting that answer at all. What support do farmers need by the community and also by the government? I say in terms of the government, right, I would say definitely in terms of some of the regulation of some of the prices okay. and also oh, making yeah. it easier to to import quality medication into the country okay. and also making it easier to import real concentrates especially for those of you that are in pig farming okay. but okay. overall I'm, I'm of the mindset the environment needs to be so clear so that you can get a blueprint to follow a path to market you know because right now there's a lot of gray areas there's a lot of people that actually have supply 
they don't have a clear path for exporting out of the country. Okay. And it's all, it's a little, it gets a little blurry yeah. there unless you have, it shouldn't be like that. If yeah. you're a farmer in production, whether you're growing peanuts to cows, whatever you're doing, you should be able to export wherever you find the market. So I hope at some point that the regulations can get a little bit more clear right. and less blurred okay. for people who want to export. Gotcha, okay. Wow, that is pretty nice. And of course the community, it's about cooperation, being togetherness, and also not to be selfish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah because I, was, I, I mentioned this earlier, you guys are very transparent. And yeah. I always get that feedback on my channel that I'm very transparent. And I'm yeah. like, what are people doing gatekeeping exactly. out here? Yeah. It doesn't benefit anybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah the knowledge is different. Be transparent. Tell yes. people what is really actually happening. Yes. Don't keep everything to yourself. A hundred percent. I love those answers, so good. Um, and lastly, what advice would you give those who want to get into farming in Uganda? Where should they start? Like I said before, do your research, mm -hmm. research, research, research yeah. and visit other farms. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think that's true. Yes, the research is started in your living room or on your phone, wherever you are. But by the same token, you definitely need to get, uh, you need to be on the ground. You need to go visit other farmers for the benefit of seeing what they're doing right, yeah. what they might be doing wrong, yeah. and then you find yourself somewhere in the middle, a happy mm -hmm. medium, right? Exactly. And just what I would like to leave you guys with, when you get into this, you know, this is not you playing the stock market. This is not you buying and flipping houses. You're in it for the long haul. You have to be prepared. You have to give yourself a proper cushion right so that way that you don't feel the financial pinch yeah. when you're waiting for a good to deliver for four and a half to five months right so you come in prepared you come in with a plan of action and you need to have a business plan and whether all your family members right a lot of people when you work for yourself and i know you know this we know this as entrepreneurs ourselves you need to treat your business like a business yeah. You need to respect what you do as a professional because if you don't respect your schedule and if you don't run your business like you're working a real corporate gig, nobody else is gonna respect your schedule and they're gonna treat you like you're that unemployed uncle or auntie that they can always drop off the kids because they don't think you're working for anybody, right? So treat it like a business, you do your research, but again, give yourself that cushion so that when you get out of the plane, you have your parachute so you can get a soft landing. Thank you guys so so much oh my god this is so informative <laughs> just know i'll be back with my notepad <laughs> i love y'all but i'm gonna come with no camera and just be taking notes like i love all of this it's just so informative so helpful guys if you have any questions please go check them out where can they find you guys your we channel also, yeah value mm -hmm. farm mm -hmm. you can also check us back yeah oh, instagram value yeah. farm ug facebook value farm Yes, love it. And please do let me know when you guys do open up for like the training, cottages, training, all that everything. stuff. Yeah. yeah. I will be <laughs> your first student and I'll bring people along with me. <laughs> that would from be my nice. As well. Thank, you. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please do remember to subscribe, hit the bell notification button, and I will check you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.